Tip Tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Uh, today we're looking at this effect that you can see here. I'm not really sure what to call it. Um, maybe shaded text uh, or this kind of ribbon kind of effect. Um, basically it's a linear gradient effect that you use inside Illustrator to make it look like the text is actually uh, slightly three dimensional. It's folded over, um, kind of like folded paper. Um, it's very simple to do. It does take a little bit of setup though or rather it goes faster if you do a little bit of setup so you can see here with the effect applied and here with the effect not done yet um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push this off screen I won't hide it because I might use it to sample the colors um, and I'm going to push this up to the center now this does assume a little bit like most of my tutorials they assume a little bit of knowledge um, but this I am just getting started out on this channel so if you want me to um, assume less knowledge in my videos um, I can do so I can take things from scratch but the aim here is to try and take things um, as if you've got a little bit of understanding and you um, you've got a little bit of knowledge of what you want to do inside Illustrator. Okay, so um, for example, the first thing we're going to want to do is set up our colors and gradients. So you can see up here, for example, I've got the base red and then it fades down to this darker red. Um, now I use a brilliant website called Flat UI Colors, um, which I'll just bring up now and show you over here. Um, and what this website does basically is if I just drag that I have an event coming up today close to the coast live at the railway. Well, I'm going to go and see that. <laughs> um, this website basically just has a set of really nice colors which work well for flat UI. Um, and if you just click them, it actually copies the color to your clipboard. Um, and you can then paste it inside, for example, Illustrator here and just hit Control V and OK. And then, it, you know, you have that color. Obviously, you can then set that up as swatches, but for this tutorial, I won't bother because I think I have them saved already inside my gradient swatch design. So that's perfect. So for line text, it's actually very simple. Let's just double click inside. So we're inside the group of um, this word here. Now we've got each of the letters individually. Um, if you just go ahead and grab your rectangle tool um, and just have any color on it at the moment, let's just have white to make it clear what we're doing. You've got to understand how the L is going to be drawn on the screen. So most of the time when somebody writes an L, they just go down and then left. So if you think about it, um, there wouldn't actually be a fold in this letter. But in order to make it look good, we're going to have it. So if we make sure we're locked onto this anchor point by just hovering over it and see the word anchor, we just want to drag a box that fits the um, horizontal part of the L here and doesn't overlap it in any way. Now it looks like that's just missing. So obviously the background is white. If you set up your gradient, and hit a new gradient swatch, you can see that's simply all it is. It's as simple as that. Now, if we wanted to, we can duplicate that and drag it over here by holding Alt and then dragging. Um, you just want to make sure you stay on top of your grouping and things like this. So you can see down here, we've got line and now we've got two of these areas. If I just hit Control G um, with those two selected, it's grouped the L back into one letter. So now if we select that, we can move both of them. And if we double click inside, we can select them individually. Um, excuse me. So with the I, for example, um, again, there wouldn't actually be a fold. So if we just rotate that and stick it at the bottom, I find that usually looks good if you put it on one of the ends because it just makes it look like it's sort of curving slightly out of the screen. Um, and if again, if you make sure it just says intersect when you're hovering, that means you're aligned perfectly. There won't be any overlap. So control G. Um, one thing to note when you're doing designs like this is um, sometimes things can go slightly off uh, alignment. No matter how hard you try, um, it just won't quite go there. Or you'll draw a path that's perfectly on place. Then when you close the path, it will shift out. That is because on transform settings, you have your align to pixel grid still selected. If you pop over to transform, which you, if you don't have there, you can just go to window transform. Um, you just click the little options button and uncheck align new objects to pixel grid. If you're doing this halfway through a project like me, select everything you've already drawn and just uh, uncheck the align to pixel grid box. And um, what that does is it stops it aligning to pixels so that it, it treats it as if it's points rather than pixels so you can go anywhere on the screen. Then when you export it, it will apply to pixels in that area. Now this N is a bit more difficult because as you can see, um, if we were to follow this fold here, it wouldn't actually line up with this corner. So we need to we need to create a line that aligns completely with this path um, and overlaps just this area. Now you can't do that with a rectangle, no matter how hard you try. So what you actually have to do is just do it with a pen tool. Now the best way I've found to align it is if you just click once on the path and then click once more at the join and then just hit V to come out of that you'll see that we've just got a line now. So if we go up to the individual um, point selection, direct selection tool, you can just choose this anchor point. And if you click and drag it, you can actually realign it. 
so it would go to the thing that you can't see it because it's pink on red but it says line extension and what you're doing is you're extending that line without affecting the angle and it'll go pink when you've done so so once you've done that if you just let go and then go back to your pen tool you can actually start oops, go back to your pen tool and click on this box at the end it will have a little minus line it won't actually minus it you just need to click on it you can then continue to draw your box now as you can see i'm being quite haphazard and going over the lines that doesn't really matter what we're going to do now is um, mask it with this n underneath so if you select the n and copy and then select nothing and control shift v to paste in place that'll actually paste a second n on top of this shape that we've drawn so with that n still selected if you hit shift and select the shape we've drawn and then pop over to your pathfinder window um, you'll have four shape modes you want to choose intersect and that means wherever these two shapes intersect leave that on screen and hide the rest so you click it and you'll get a shape that is um, the shape of an intersection here so now all we need to do is choose our gradient and click the gradient tool down here because it's the wrong angle and then click and drag holding shift if you want to get it perfectly straight to adjust the angle and that's it there we go done so what we actually can do now is just copy that and rotate it 100 degrees again holding shift and then see here you get a bit of a difficulty aligning because of the snapping and things like that so if you want to you can actually zoom all the way in um, and align it yourself like so now it might not be exactly the same as you can see here it's not actually uh, exactly aligned because this side of the end is slightly thicker than the other so if you do get that what you can do in fact is if you select the shape and choose individual point selection and click one of the corners you can then just drag those corners individually and if you hold shift um, then it won't affect the angle it will just affect the anchor um, on the axis that it's already on and then you drag it into here that's in position and that one's pretty much there but we'll just perfectly align it perfect okay so if we double click out of all of that and zoom out again you can see that our ends looking pretty good so we'll select all three of those shapes Control g to join them now e that is exactly the same so if we double click inside l we can actually just copy and click inside e and hit paste and we get one of our rectangles the rectangles are nice and easy which is why i love doing this effect on flat fonts like this um, because you can literally just copy and paste a rectangle around and it looks really good and it's very quick to do um, so alt and shift to keep it on the same axes will create a copy of it further up and there you go um, I, I like it when we leave that middle e section out because it looks like the edges are just folded over so select and control g so you've got four layers and if you click outside now you can see that we've pretty much duplicated that exact effect from the top so with simple text like that it's actually very quick and easy to do with more complicated text like this hand here you've got to do it all with paths like we did on the n um, not much more complicated it just does mean it takes a little bit more time so if we um, click inside I'll do it in this episode too even though it's getting a bit long um, I will do one letter and then I'll fast forward and do the rest off screen so this H for example um, you need to understand how this H is gonna be drawn so if you grab your pen tool and sort of think about how you draw an H you, you do that but each time you change direction that's where the shadow would appear so if you just click on this edge of this anchor point and basically just draw yourself a little wobbly line in how you kind of think the pen might have acted like so perhaps um, and then just click randomly outside making sure not to overlap and then select the h Control shift v uh, Control c then Control shift feeds copy and paste it select the layer underneath and then go to your pathfinder and again we've got that lovely perfect shape nice and easy click the gradient make sure that the gradient's in the right direction voila simple as that do another one here click the join create a wobbly line how you think it would go and then click outside again doesn't matter because we're just going to mask it select the h there again copy paste in place select the one beneath it intersect grab that and apply your gradient and make sure the direction is good so um, you can see at the moment we've got a bit of overlap here that was my fault entirely so what we can actually do is um, if we double click inside and inside again you can actually adjust it or um, if we wanted to make it a bit easier we can just adjust the gradient like that um, oops I accidentally overrode the other one so excuse me adjust the gradient like so makes it a bit bolder and then we can push it below by hitting control 
close uh control open square bracket which is actually move one layer down um, and then we go that fixes it so that's the h i'm going to fast forward now and do all of the others a n and d um, and then i'll see you when i'm finished okay we're back and we are done now i pretty much replicated the old version um so as you can see you just apply gradients in the way that you think will look good when it's finished um and that's pretty much all there is to it now of course you can do this with radial gradients if you want a bit of a softer curve you can do it with darker colors you can do it with completely different colors uh, i choose to just basically use the slightly darker version of what i've got on screen but apart from that it's completely up to you very simple and it looks great uh, i really love this effect you can see i've used it in my tip tut logo as well so thanks for watching if you want more like this let me know um if you liked it subscribe if you didn't that's also cool i will guess i'll see you around maybe but probably not if you're not subscribing okay bye remember to subscribe for more tips tricks and tutorials thanks for watching